What is the history of Solana NFTs? My name is Seb Monty, and I'm trying to get you from zero to hero with everything related to the Solana blockchain. So let's just do a quick run through from when NFT started to where they are now. So back in 2021, in August, we had our first marketplace come along. This was called Solana Art. Now Solana Art, they completely dropped the ball, to be brutally honest, and they got overtaken hugely. So now there's nothing really, you know, being developed on this particular platform. At present, no one really uses Solana Art, like probably very few users, less than 10 a day, I would assume. So we can see here the uh, amount of volume in the last seven days, to be perfectly honest, just basically nothing. So the thing with Solana Art is they had the first mover advantage. And then from there, they just got lazy, to be perfectly honest. They were greedy and lazy. They had a listing fee, so what happened is, let's say you had a really rare ape, or really rare SMB or something like that, you could list this for like a thousand soul. And then I can't remember what it was, but it was like 0.8% or something like that. It was less than 1%, but you could basically spend hundreds or thousands of dollars to list it so that someone may hopefully buy it and then people didn't buy it and people just lost this huge amount of money because back then Phantom didn't show easily that money was leaving your wallet. Now it does, of course. These were the early days. So Solana Art really helped trading, but then they just dropped the ball. Then Magic Eden came along and they just grew and grew and grew. They made mistakes along the way, but these days they're repairing most mistakes for sure. And this is my go-to marketplace. This is the one I'm most bullish on. There was also Soulsea, but there were issues here where I remember fake collections could be allowed on the marketplace. People would buy them. Scammers would make a lot of money and Solsi didn't do anything about it. Now before all that, the first major launch was SMB. Back then I was working with Phantom in Discord support and I just got busier and busier. So although I was kind of keeping an eye on the ecosystem, I missed so many mints because the first thing I did when I woke up was I checked Discord, replied to anything, and the last thing I did before I went to sleep in bed was I checked Discord and I replied to things. It was a crazy chaotic time. With SMB, I remember to mint one, you had to send them soul to a particular address and then sometime later, maybe a few minutes, few hours, etc., they would send you an SMB. So there's no guarantee that it'll be random. Maybe you got a rare one, maybe you got a super rare one, maybe you got a common one, but this was the first kind of major mint. It just wasn't done in a trustless way. Minting back then was done on websites. This one wasn't around back then, but this is Launch My NFT, something I never recommend using. You can use it, of course. However, there's a lot of rugs that mint on this because it's so easy to mint on. But as an example, you'd come, you'd connect your wallet and there'd be a mint button and you just push it. However, for most mints after SMB, they use Metaplex on their own website. A dev would set it up and they use something called the candy machine. So in August 2021, the DGN Ape Academy was about to mint and things exploded. I was able to look after phantom support with one other person. There was about 80,000 active wallets, something like that using the phantom wallet. And then within a week or less, it went to 500,000 wallets. The art was epic, the website was amazing, Monolith was funny in all of his tweets, everything was looking up. So I put out this video basically showing you how you could mint it. And then the mint failed, everything broke. There was no infrastructure set up on Solana at the time. I won't go into the whole history, you can watch this video if you like, but this is what Phantom used to look like back then. It didn't show everything that it does today. They had the Apentosh set up to mint, it looked really, really good. And as I said, it broke, it completely failed. So then Solana Labs deployed a team to actually build the infrastructure necessary to do the mint. This was Bartosz and Jordan. These guys later formed B&J Studios. There are other people there as well. They're just the two most well-known ones. They created Candy Machine. So just picture a gumball machine. Everything's preloaded with NFTs. You put in a quarter, or you put in your soul, and you get a random gumball out. That's what they created. The launch then went ahead. So imagine tens of thousands of people coming to the website and all clicking the mint button at the same time. Because back then there was no such thing as a pre-sale or a whitelist. It was just first come, first served. And so you had people trying to mint on their phone, on their laptop, on a second computer. They had their girlfriend involved, their boyfriend involved, their mum involved. All these people just trying to get in. And that's how NFT minting on all chains was initially. And from there, people used the candy machine. Now, if you're not familiar with the DGN Apes, you can check out the website dgnape.academy. They've just launched Higher Self, which is transcending your ape, so you can customize it. These are the original DGN Apes, as shown on sniper.xyz. Now let's get to price and hype. This data goes from November, 
but basically it minted, it still went up, there was some FUD, it went up further, it came down, did all sorts of things, and then it went a little bit crazy. So in March 2022, it was over 100 sol. And just to work out the price of sol back then, we basically had in August $40. It rocketed up very, very quickly. September, it was basically $200. It came down a little bit. By November 2021, it had hit the top around $260. And then it started to come down and hover around the $100 mark or thereabouts. But let's just step back in time to the SMB collection. They're currently trading around 96 sol, and they minted a few weeks before the DGN Apes. Their price went up and it rocketed up, to be honest. I can't see all the price information earlier than this, but at one stage, I think the floor price was about 40,000 US dollars, and now the floor price is around $2,000. As I mentioned in a prior video, NFTs can be extremely volatile. In June, they were over 200 sol, and they've come down hugely. That's just the nature of NFTs, and that's why we're doing all this education with history. Now, I've been a part of the DJ Ape Academy community since before it minted, and I've had a part-time community role with the team just after Mint. So by all means, understand that I have a vested interest in the DJ Ape Academy doing well. However, I honestly think the art and the creativity is insane. Like, Ascend, A-S-S-E-N-D. The font, the lettering, everything is just so creative. This ape doing one of these ones. You know, those things are funny, but we're here to talk about prices. So the price came up and at one stage, the floor price was around $11,000. It came on down, it went up, it came on down, it went up, it came on down and went up, as many NFTs have. There was a pump earlier this year and it went up to about 80 sol and then it came down normally to about 50 sol. Quite often, the floor price was 50 sol. And then things broke down to the mid 30s. Now that Higher South has launched, I think the price may go up a little bit, but that's not what we're gonna discuss. The point is across the board, we have highs and lows, and highs and lows, but when there's hype, we've got massive highs, and now without the hype, quite low lows. I think this is the worst launch from a known brand, Bold Badges. They came from the Solana art team. They're just terrible. I think the art is terrible. The way they did it, terrible. They held like the rarest ones for the team. All sorts of crazy things. And to be honest, after the DJ Ape Academy, I didn't see any insane effort that often from many projects. It was mostly launching rugs. So something that would take your money, they would give almost nothing back, they'd disappear, the project would close. In late August, a Rory project, a gaming company, they were going to do a launch. The minting price was five sol, the date was all set, everything was hyped. And these are what the Aurorians looked like. Now this was extremely botted, and because the candy machine was not set up correctly, I believe instead of the five sol minting cost, it was one sol. The botters load up a wallet, spammed hundreds of thousands of transactions, and took a huge amount of the supply for themselves, and the normal person did not get an NFT. Some of course did, but not very many. This is just a growing pain in the Solana ecosystem, but to be perfectly honest, it's across all blockchains, all of them. At one stage in 2021, somewhere around here where I can't see the details, the cost was over $10,000 for one of these NFTs. The price rallied up, it came on down, went really, really low, and now it's quite low, around 15 sol. Also around this time, Thugbirds did a mint. This is the art of Thugbirds, and this project essentially did a soft rug. You can watch videos for more information by all means. The price in 2021 went up to over $10,000 per NFT, and then it came down and did this and did this. One reason why there was so much hype was there was talk about becoming an independent artist music licensing service, something along those lines, which was something definitely needed. However, as far as I'm aware, the person in charge wasn't good at putting money to people to bring these things about, and so it never came about. Then we hit a metaverse narrative and portals came along and portals is and was cool. You can basically build your own metaverse space. Now these things minted out extremely quickly. I do think they were botted, but I can't really remember. The price rocketed up and they became over $10,000 and now they're about 10 sol, so maybe they're around $300. I minted two, but my wife never wanted me to sell them. Completely great project but it's just an illustration of how things can rocket up and come on down. They are access passes that allow you to build a space. Later on, we had the shadowy super coded DAO mint, and this was an unhyped mint. It was slowly minting, and then it minted out super fast. 
you can see these are worth one soul. However, they reached in May 2022, 250 soul. So 250 soul in May 22 was like $25,000. And now they're worth $27. Other notable collections out there are Famous Foxes. They're worth over $10,000. Now they're worth under $1,000. I can't remember the exact top price, but it was definitely over $10,000. Then a new project came along, D-Gods. Now during this entire time, there was actually probably 50,000 projects that were minting. Just most of them were uneventful. They came, they went, so many projects rug. It's just the nature of NFTs. It's just the nature of crypto. Everyone has an idea. Everyone thinks they're gonna be good at something. And the reality is it's hard to be good at something. It's hard to be great or excellent or super competent at something, especially when you don't have product market fit. Anyway, D-Gods came along with a whole lot of hype. They've since moved to the Ethereum blockchain, something I don't agree with, but it was their decision and I respect that. And they are still the most expensive collection on Solana as some of them are still on Solana. Their chart looks like this. Low, 10 sol, a rocketing up, 586 sol, then a rocketing up recently to about 2000 sol before coming and crashing all the way down. As I mentioned, they're on Ethereum and they're about 3.36 ETH. They went up to about eight ETH, I think, and then they've come down pretty sharply. So that's a bit of a glimpse into the history of Solana NFTs. There's so much more to it than that, but basically what I'm trying to convey is these prices can go up and down like crazy. Are they good investments? No, not necessarily, pretty much never. There are more details I'll give you in the next video, but I just want you to be aware that hype can make things go so crazy. And then if the team doesn't deliver or if for whatever reason, the community is not behind it. They fail in terms of floor price, but most of the projects that you like will fail. Even in the next bull run, most of them will go up briefly and then come crashing down. Having said all that, with a little bit of knowledge, NFTs are fantastic. They're cool things to collect. They're great ways to gain access to communities. And in the future, they're gonna have a lot more utility, events, all sorts of things. So don't be scared of them. Don't think they're scams. Just be aware that we need a little bit more knowledge to navigate the NFT space. That's all for this video. Stay curious. We'll catch you in the next video.